Hey everyone, it's Sam Mackay from Enterprise DNA. Okay, I'm gonna show you something really, really cool today on uh, in Power BI. Now, I've actually showcased uh, dynamic visuals before, right? So you can create dynamic visuals by using um, a few techniques, but today I wanna to show you how you can create dynamic reports. And this is really taking it to a new level, right? Now, what we're looking at here, this is actually a report, uh, a, 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 um, uh, a model and, and, and dashboard I created for a full workshop that I ran um, as part of the Enterprise DNA webinar series. Now, I'll leave a link below to the full workshop uh, in the description. So if you want to show, uh, see from start to finish how this was developed, then certainly check that out. Um, but what I want to uh, really talk about today is how you can not only create dynamic visuals, but dynamic reports. And that's where things really go to a new level in Power BI. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, I want to, we've got all these different um, pieces of analysis that we're showcasing here, right? So we've got some information spatially, we've got some cumulative information, so performance over time. We've got some um, ranking um, type insights here. So we're saying our top seven clients, our top products, etc. Uh, and then we've got some trend analysis here. So you see here that I've I've I've, I've made the um, visualizations. Um, I've really simplified the visualizations. All we're trying to do is identify trends, etc. Now, ordinarily that could be you know it could be dynamic because you can change the time frame, you can change the context, etc. But usually it's all going to be for one static metric. It's, it's going to be for say sales, or it's going to be for profits, or it's going to be for costs or transactions, or, or something generic like that. In most cases, obviously. If you're doing something totally different um, you know, and you don't use those sort of metrics, then it's going to be slightly different. But look, it's, it's the same technique. There's nothing different. Now, what I have done with this report is I have dynamically integrated different metrics into all of these visualizations. And that, so, that's, you know, so that's the core of what I want to um, talk to and show you. So up here, you'll see here, we've got select and analysis metric, right? Well, I can go revenue. I can actually then jump to, say, costs. And all of my visualizations will dynamically change. I can go to profits. And then everything within my report is now going to change to profits. And so I can quickly jump through and think about the power of this. You know, if you were creating some sort of static PowerPoint presentation, you'd have to create tens of pages to actually showcase this. But we can actually showcase these all within the same visualizations to showcase a different metric. So really, really effective way to consolidate information, right? And so really, it just us takes the dynamic visual technique to a new level. Now, how do we do it? How do we do it? Okay, so the key thing you have to understand here is measure branching. You have to understand measure branching. Now, this is a technique I talk about quite a bit, um, and um, something I don't really hear talk about very often. But they sh everyone should be because measure branching is the way to is the fastest way to create these really advanced reports. Now, what we first of all need to do is create our core metrics. So things like we need to create sales, we need to create costs, we need to create profits. But we need to branch out into this one master measure which ena which enables us to select any of those or, or, or showcase any of those based on the selection okay so let's just have a look so down the side here i've got my total costs i've got my total profits i've got my total sales but what i need to do is i need to somehow integrate those measures into the selections that we're making right so i need to somehow integrate it in now that's where i have branched out into um, the i've called the metric calcs right and i've called it selected metric so um, what I've done here, well, first of all, we need to go and work out what the metric selected is first. So I'll show you, showcase that to you first, actually. Um, so what I need to do is I need to create, obviously, I want to look at revenue, costs, and profits. So I needed to create, actually, a table. I needed to create a table which just had those metrics in it because we need to create a filter, a slicer, right? And we need to somehow do that. This doesn't exist in our, in our data, obviously. So I created it here. And then um, we need to work... Uh, create a formula which goes in um, based on the selection we make it picks up whatever one was where where um, uh, we want to showcase right so in this case it's going selected value metric and then revenue and so if we select revenue here well, that is going to return revenue or if we select cost that's going to return cost etc and then we can we can branch out into this one right so this is going to be our master measure so this, this is a, a, a key point to remember is you've got to create a master measure that we can feed into all of these other different branches of calculations and so what we're doing here is we're saying okay well if revenue is selected i want to showcase total sales and all my results if costs is selected i want to showcase costs profits profits etc etc okay so switch true this is where 
um, you can really benefit from using switch and the switch true method. Uh, it's just like nested if statements, probably just it's just a much more effective way to, to, to showcase them uh, or, or, or to structure your formula rather. Okay, so now that we've got this master metric, well now we can branch out, we can utilize our measure branching development technique and we can branch out into these other um, uh, other calculations. But now these calculations are going to be dynamic, right? Because we're going to be able to select any metric in, be in behind them. Now the first one, let's have a look at our, to our cumulative total branch. Well, if we have a look at every, uh, what feeds into our cumulative total, you will see, let's have a look. <coughs> Um, you will see, so let, let's start with this one here. So um, have I got the right one? Yes, okay, so here we go. So this is this is the first branch, right? So we've got, um, instead of putting, say, total sales or whatever, we are putting our master measure in here. We're putting selected metric in here, right? And so it's the same pattern, the same um, way that you would write a cumulative total calculation. Um, it has just now incorporated the selected metric measure versus our core measures. And so, and then we can branch out into, um, say, time intelligence calculations, <coughs> uh, etc. And so that's what I've, that's exactly what I've done here. Uh, and I've done uh, the same, say, for what have we got here. So we've got um, selected metric here, and actually, sorry, time intelligence. I've then um, branched out into time intelligence down here. I probably should have put that in a, in a separate measure, measure table, but I haven't in this case. But anyway, um, same thing here. First of all, we go to, we go, um, to a, a, a last year or time intelligence um, type calculation inside a calculate, but we use selected metric. And then we jump back into, um, into here and we integrate that into here. And so it's just about branching from one measure to the next, but instead we're feeding through this new master measure instead of our core measures. And that's really, this is really how we do it. I've also done moving averages. I've also incorporated it in my ranking um, formula. So you see here, I've got selected metric, I've got selected metric. So that's how you create dynamic, these entirely dynamic reports based on metrics that you might select. So it's a seriously, seriously an amazing, visualization technique. Think about how much information you can consolidate into one report by utilizing a technique like this. You might want to simplify it, you might want to make it more complex, you might want to have more metrics, more elements in terms of what you want to showcase in your reports. But that's really, this is the this is the mindset you got you have to um, get in to actually implement it inside of Power BI. So what I what I would suggest. So look, there's there's a little bit to that. There's a little bit to that. Obviously, you got to know, um, you know, how to use switch true, how to branch out into time intelligence calc, cumulative total calcs, moving average calcs, ranking calcs. But all of these things combined, this is how you build really compelling Power BI reports, right? By combining all of these different things and then showcasing them in a compelling way. And so that's what I've tried to do with this with this report here. Now, um, I'm going to round off there. But if you do want to watch the entire um, a workshop where I run through from start to finish how I built this. So basically, you can you can uh, it's a more extended version of what, of what I've covered today, um, w plus a, a number of other things around visualization techniques, etc. Um, certainly check out the link below in the description. And if you want to actually see what um, how see the support and see how it's all been created, etc. Well, um, you can so check out the Power BI showcase page uh, at the Enterprise DNA website and you will be able to see um, or actually utilize the demo live um, so you'll be able to have a play around and see exactly um, what i was um, just showcasing then okay so all the best of these this technique um you know it's, pr it's probably one of my favorite in power bi you know um and there's so many different ways you can use it so that, that, that's 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 the um that's the great thing about it um, and so, you know, you'll probably likely hear um, you know, or see me showcase this even a few more times um, out there because uh, I do think that from a visualization perspective, a consolidation perspective, you know, it, it is a really effective way to use Power BI. Okay, all the best with this one. Take care. Speak to you soon.